Well, hello everybody. It's Ronnie with Whip and Chain. I want to do a tutorial today on doing these adorable. They're they're vintage, vintage um, like hot pads, and there's a couple ways of doing them. But I did my first one here. If you can notice, I just used a magic ring because I was having a debate with myself. They're for the kitchen. They're hot pads. You don't want to put a plastic ring in here because if it gets too hot, it could melt. Okay. Then a wooden ring. Eh, that kind of made me nervous too. So, and then we talked metal. Metal can grab heat and get hot. But I did a lot of Googling on like Amazon and different videos. And a lot of people, when they make these, they are using the rings. So I wanted to show you another one that I started and this is with the ring and obviously this one is without. I like this. I do. I just love it. It it's I love it. I don't even know what else to say. But you can do this with a magic circle if you prefer or you can chain I think it's 5 and slip stitch to the first stitch up to you but I do want to warn you if you do use a ring or plastic or wood or whatever you're choosing think about if that's the only time you're going to use it to hang it and you're going to use the rest to use that's fine but if you're using if you know you're going to be handling this part or if you have young children it, I really need you to think long and hard before you do it because I absolutely do not recommend you using metal, plastic, or wood in these if you know you have young children or if you know you're going to be touching these. These can get hot. Catch fire if you use wood. I, I, that, I think that's all I can say about it. But just be cautious on what you choose. And you have to use 100% cotton. Nothing else. Acrylic will melt. Acrylic will burn. You can get hurt. Children using it can get hurt. 100% cotton. Okay. But again, here's with a metal ring, without a metal ring. And it's totally your choice. Again, this is a very, very easy pattern. And <laughs> did I not bring... I think I forgot. Oh, here they are. I thought I forgot my metal rings. So, this is what we're going to do. So, I have metal ring. I'm going to show you how to do this. This is a very, very easy pattern. You can use any size. Your count around the ring does not matter. Absolutely zero. But, for demonstration purposes, this is sugar and cream. This is rose pink. And it is 100% cotton yarn. Okay. That's my ring. So, you start with your little slip knot. Oh, and I'm sorry, I don't think I told you. The hook that I'm using is a three millimeter hook. Okay. So you put your hook through first and grab your yarn. Bring it through and just do a chain. Simple, simple chain. Chain one. All right. Now, all I need you to do is half double crochets completely around your hook, your ring, whatever you're using, whatever you chose to use, until you're happy with the thick with um how many stitches you have in here i'm struggling with this yarn today i'll try again i love not deleting these bloopers because i want you to see that i am very human with crocheting too i have my off nights i have my good nights Damn. And half doubles. Okay. 
There we go. Yeah. Ever notice how the yarn sometimes just it doesn't want to cooperate? Yeah, have those days too. So you just go around and around and around doing your half doubles. So we're getting a lot of feedback from people watching our videos or stumbling across them when they're searching things for different things in crochet. We're getting a lot of positive feedback. So I just want to shout out to everybody that is supporting Maggie, myself, and Lauren in this venture. We really, really do appreciate everything. So... So anyway, so you just go around and around and around and around until you fill up your full ring. And like I said, the number on here does not matter. It can be an odd number. It can be an even number. It can be 20. It can be 40. It can be 32, 35, 37. It doesn't matter. Just have your ring filled to your comfort. Oh, the only thing I want to say is just don't overfill it. Don't like keep squishing it where they're pushing the stitches forward or backwards. You really don't want that. Now, on the purple sample, I did. See this finishing? This is called the crab stitch. I know the crab stitch scares some people when they hear it. It's really, it's really not that bad. And once you actually catch on on how to do it, you'll say, why have I been staying away from it? Because some people that I've talked to, they they just don't, they said they tried it, they don't have luck with it. Whoops. It's really not that bad. Now, I'm going to make that work for now, because this is just a sample. So I want you to slip stitch to your first stitch when you got the ring. Or you, if you did your chain, you did the magic ring, whatever. All right, you chain one. Now, when you normally crochet, I, I'm right-handed. So I crochet from right to left. Okay? I start here, and then I work over. With a crab stitch, if you're right to left, then you go left to right. And it is a single crochet. So... You chain one. Now, it's how you hold everything. The first couple stitches are the hardest. Once you get the first maybe two stitches in, it's free sailing. I promise it's free sailing. So you take your hook. I always hold my yarn this way. Take your hook and you go into the very first crochet stitch that's available. And see how I'm bending going in then I'm grabbing see the yarn I'm going over top grabbing it coming through and I just pull through where the piece of yarn that I pulled through is at the top of the hook the chain that you've already had is at the bottom so after you do that you wrap the hook and you go through and through. All right, now you go into the next stitch. Same thing. Go into that stitch, grab your yarn, bring it through, and just hold it this way. Do not flip it up or turn it. Hold it where the piece that you grabbed is at the top of the hook, 
the piece uh, the the loop that was already on is at the bottom and your hook is being held horizontal you wrap and you go through both of them and now this is where you should start seeing a crap stitch then you go into your next one and you just keep doing it see And you just go around your full project. Okay. So, like I did on here, you just go all the way around. Okay. Except, sh sorry, let me take that back. You do the whole circle except leave nine stitches undone. Because the thing about the crab stitch, you really can't crochet on top of that. Once you do the crab stitch, it's a finishing stitch. It's very difficult to crochet over top of that. Okay. So let's do, let me do a couple more with you. Take your hook, go in, grab your yarn, keep your hook horizontal, wrap the yarn, and go through. Okay, so that's what you see how pretty that is. Come on, it's gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous to do. You gotta do it. <laughs> if you do it, please come to our Facebook page, Whip and Chain for Work in Progress and Chain. Show us your crab stitches. I want to see them because they're beautiful and I know you got this. So anyway, so when you're done, when you do all the stitches except nine, now remember, except nine. I'm gonna just pretend I'm done and I'm gonna slip stitch. Okay. Now, in the nine stitches, I want you to put a double, in the first four, put one double crochet. So, this is four. So, one, two. You don't need to be that close for double crochets, right? <laughs> two, three, and four. Now on the next stitch, I want you to put three double crochets on that same stitch. One, two, and three. Oh, Moose needs help getting up on the couch. Get right back off. Uh -oh, throw your paws in and say hello to everybody. Mm -hmm. Hello, everybody. It's the Momo Man. <laughs> okay. So you put your three double crochets in that one stitch. And then the last four, put one double crochet. So that's one. It's two. Three and four. Okay. And that's what that'll look like. Remember, you would have your whole grab stitch going around. So you have four single double crochets. Then you have three double crochets in one chain. And you have four more. Okay. So for the next row chain two. Just two. One and two. So now you'll put one double crochet in each of the next five stitches. One, two, 
two. and five and now in the next one you put three all in that same chain one two and three and then one double crochet in the last one each in the last five stitches and believe it or not that is this pattern each row you know how we did the first row four double crochets excuse me four double crochets then three double crochets and then four more so three and then the next row, it'd be five. Then the next row, it'll be six and so forth, so forth, okay? That is how this progresses. So when you're done each row, you will chain two. Chain two, that doesn't count as anything. So this would be six double crochets, three double crochets in the next stitch, then six more, then you chain two, then you would do seven, and then your three, and seven, and then eight, and nine, and 10. And after you do all that, this is how she grows. Isn't she beautiful? Oh, I love, you know what? I, I'm glad I did one in variegate color. I'm in love with it. So now again, I started at four and four, so four, one four double crochets in each stitch except the middle one and i did three then the next row i did five then six then seven then eight and so forth and i did that all the way until i had 20 double crochets three double crochets in the center and 20 more double crochets that is the length that i choose for myself the cool part about this project can make it as long as you want you can make it longer if you want it's all good now in my original sample if you look at the bottom if you can guess can you guess what stitch i did yep i did the crab stitch at the bottom and look how pretty 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 that looks finished it's gorgeous so again it's cotton yarn i just used i don't know if the color names on this one or not 100% cotton right there it says it but I don't know if it has a name but let me tell you oh dreamy called 120 color name dreamy perfect name for it it is dreamy I want to buy more of that so after I did my whole row on the bottom remember crab stitches backwards so I did my last stitch you don't have to finish the bottom with the crab stitch if you don't want to but I do so remember again chain one let's do the crab stitch you ever go crabbing you ever notice how they walk sideways they're really cool I love crabbing all right <laughs> so I'm gonna go into my first stitch now remember, it feels weird. Grab the yarn, bring it through, keep it sideways, wrap it, and go through. Then you're going to the next stitch. Keep it sideways, guys. Keep your hook sideways. And then you go into the next one. Look at that. So it's one time. Once you get going, I really believe it's the getting started. 
Now this vintage di uh, hot pad was absolutely 100% Maggie's idea. So another shout out to Miss Maggie. She does so much for this group. So much. See? You see how pretty this crab stitch can do beautiful on so many kinds of projects, like scarves, like edging on a scarf. Gorgeous. Edging on a baby blanket. Simple. No holes. Gorgeous. It's not a stitch that I would love, would, would, it would make me sad for the people who follow us to be shied away from this stitch because it's beautiful. And if you're watching this video, Loretta, I would love to see your crab stitch because, guys, if, you, if you're if you on our Facebook page, there's a wonderful lady and we adore her and um, she does beautiful work. Beautiful, beautiful. Her name's Loretta. Anyway, the trick is always to keep your hook horizontal. And don't, when you go through your hook and you grab, don't, don't be manipulating it different ways. I think that's where a lot of people struggle. They want to change how they're holding their hook or whatever and because it's natural to want to do that but it's not natural to crochet in this direction so that's probably another reason why it feels so weird So what do you think, guys? I would lo love to see your comments on this video. Tell me what you think of this stitch. Tell me if it's a yay or a nay for you. And why? If you don't like it, let me know why. And if you need another tutorial on this all you have to do is let us know I can try to do another tutorial teaching you how to do this look at that I'm halfway through I am a slow crocheter if anybody's been watching me knows I am not fast and I'm actually proud of that fact These, with me being as slow as I am, I think it took me an hour, hour and a half to get one of these done once I figured out the hook size I was using. Because the first time I made them, I used a bigger hook and then they were ginormous and it just didn't look pretty. This hook, it looks pretty.
so this is exactly how you make this pattern. Very easy pattern. I've tried it in half doubles. I've tried it in trebles. It seems doing to double crochets for me was the the sweet spot. But you're more than welcome to take the idea of this pattern and run with it in any direction that you'd like. And that's absolutely wonderful. Creativity. I'm about it. And that's it. That is how you make this beautiful, beautiful vintage hot pad. Gorgeous. There's no wrong side to it. There's no right side to it. And again, if you want to make them without, you can see they're just not as defined. If you want to make them without the, the metal ring, you just use a magic ring or you can like chain five and put your, your half doubles in the ring. Okay. Well, thank you, everybody. Um, a shout out to Maggie and Lauren for helping with everything that they do for this wonderful group. And come find us on, on uh, Facebook, please, under Whip for Work in Progress and Chain. If you like this video, hit that like button at the bottom. We really appreciate your support. And hit that subscribe button. Come follow us. We have so many plans for the future. Until next time, though, everybody, happy crocheting. Stay safe in this world. Bye.